time since I did a video. And probably if people have thought uh, he must have gave up on the car, maybe he got it finished, or maybe he died. Luckily, the latter hasn't happened, uh, nor have I gave up on the vehicle, but I haven't got it finished. Uh, not because I haven't been busy, just haven't been busy on it. But I've been working on some things to make it better, easier to work on it. Uh, I came across a super good deal on another building, the building I was working out in once I put the paint booth in, um, didn't leave me much room to work outside the paint booth. So most everything was done in the booth and the booth wasn't quite big enough either. So uh, we're in the same booth now, but in the new building and the booth is now wider and longer. Um, the chest or the body here has been covered up. It's so really not much has happened yet since the last video. But the chassis is uh, pretty much complete. The engine is at the machine shop right now. It just got bored. Um, it's being pressure checked again, just to make sure everything's good. Um, but as I was saying, I come across a super good deal, and with the help of uh, uh, my brother and father-in-law, my boys. Same kind of setup as before, with the before and after pictures, not nearly as many um, this time as normal, uh, but with a little bit of camera trickery. I'm no means a cinematographer, but it was fun to do what I did. So anyway, I hope you like it. And uh, next video, uh, I'll show you the pretty much completed chassis. All right, here we are outside the booth. Um, I misspoke a little bit and said in the next video, it's really not gonna be the next video, it's in this video, this is the next part of this video. I was gonna show you the completed chassis. So, um, I went from the smaller building, like I said, to this building. Um, like I said, we took it down, put it back together. Here's the 59 chassis on the lift. Um, also working on, in conjunction, working on the Sun's uh, 66 chassis, which is uh, right here. It's pretty much complete. He's going for way more power than me. Uh, 496 um, that we built for it, he and I. Uh, made some custom stainless headers for it. Uh, strange rear end. 400 uh, turbo, extra clutches in each drum. First time we've rebuilt a 400 turbo, but he and I are learning and doing that. Um, the body for it right here, we uh, put new quarters on it. Um, probably a video later following that car a little bit. So, uh, anyway. The 59 chassis, along with our wooden wheels we roll it around with. Um, said Sam blasted it. All uh, stainless brake line. Um, I went with the uh, tubular control arms. Um, started going to use all the original stuff. Found out one of the front control arms was twisted. Um, 
And then once the son bought all his tubular stuff, it's like, oh, I could ride in a lot more comfort. So went with all Ride Tech tubular front and rear control arms, um, the carrier in the back of the original rear end from setting had rested in the carrier itself. Um, so the carrier itself was no good. Of course, save the outer casting. Uh, switched this was not a posi. Switched it to a posi unit now. Since I am using a factory overdrive, which this did not have. Um, it was a 355 gear. Now it's 411, which according to the manual, that's what should be in the overdrive cars. So it's 411. First rear end I've ever set up. So I'm hoping it works. We'll find out. Um, that's a uh, cast iron engine paint. I really like the look of it. I'm hoping it continues to look like this and doesn't rust up or do something strange. I don't know. Um, the chassis itself is uh, the Eastwood ceramic coated. Um, I said I did go air ride. Not that I'm going to make it a set on the ground or anything. Um, but I did want a little more comfortable ride. Uh, disc brakes all the way around. I am waiting on the disc brakes for the back. Um, that's really the only thing that's going to hold me up here. Um, ordered them in October. And been told they're not going to be here until March. Um, I guess because of all the COVID, which has hold, held up everything. Uh, what a mess. Anyway. Um, I got, uh, I was going to do everything in the push lock tubing for the bags, but, uh, I decided to do everything in stainless to hopefully never worry about it again. Um, of course, these are just temporary, uh, fittings here to air it up with. I made these blocks so they kind of would look like a factory block, um, and mount it there. And then these two lines will go up to my air controls um, all the brake lines did all those in stainless used the original blocks but uh, make it all in stainless uh, change this from a non power steering car to a factory power steering got off a donor car a factory cylinder and uh, the control valve rebuilt both of those I uh, rebuilt the factory steering box, which would have been for the, that came with all the power steering portion for this, because I was, uh, from what I've learned, the ratio is a little bit different. So, first time uh, doing all of those components. Um, I still have to hook up my tie rod on this side, and uh, my line for my airbag on this side. Uh, I had to redo some spots on the frame that'll be shown on the video or the portion of the video after this um, some of it was rusted away pretty good like uh, I don't know if you can tell but that section of the frame there is kind of smooth that's because that's all new steel also a section underneath on the other side um, this side had rusted away not to holes but thinner than I want it to be um, the underneath had been I don't know if it had been bottomed out, maybe been jacked up with a bottle jack or something. It was bowed in really bad, um, buckled out on the outside, fixed all that, all new steel. The inside of the frame was surprisingly good shape. Uh, what we did on this is put this on the rotisserie, taped off after we sandblasted. had the sandblast guys try to blast as much inside as possible. And... Um, and we took put on the rotisserie, I taped all the holes off, poured about a half a gallon of chassis saver in it, which you could use 415 or whatever you want to use. Um, and then the son and I spun this thing on the rotisserie for probably 30 minutes um, until our arms were about to fall off. But what it did, I don't know how easy it'll be to see maybe, but inside the frame, Looks like, it's probably not going to focus good, but inside the frame, looks like we've been inside there 
painting it and you can look through every hole there is with the bore scope and it is just coated from one end to the other uh, like I said we taped it off rolled it and after about 30 minutes untaped everything and let it all drain out we did the same thing to his chassis too but you know, this is in hopes that it won't over time be bleeding rust lines out over my paint on the outside so anyway it's just something I did um, you might want to do it if you're redoing your frame or maybe not anyway um, I'm gonna go over a little bit in the next part of the video here on the air ride what I did uh, on the mounting for these and um, and a little bit of video of the disassembly of the chassis and to the point that it is now. So anyway, uh, here we go. Hello everybody, um, 59 here sitting on the rotisserie with the uh, mocked up ride tech tubular control arm and airbag setup. Um, I'll go through here in a minute how I did everything. I just mocked it up, make sure there wasn't any issues before I put this in the booth and paint the frame. Um, turned out really good. This is really, really nice stuff here from Ride Tech. Um, went through and did some extra things to it. I'll explain here in a minute. Um, I'll show you on the, the back, but... Um, Part of it has to deal with these little spacers on the top um, to get the profile right and get the bag totally lined up with the center and the bottom. A little overkill probably would have worked fine the way it was, but uh, let's try to get a little bit of my eyes closer to being perfect. Um, it's the shock because you have to replace uh, or Remount uh, the shock. Of course, in the spring it would have been the center, but with the airbag there, you can't do that with the shock, so you have to relocate it. Uh, the brackets come where you bolt them on here. I wanted this to look, even though this didn't come with airbags, I wanted it to look a little more uh, like the bracket could have been a factory bracket. So uh, instead of drilling, bolting, um, I cut it, got in location, cut it, and weld the whole thing on. Um, I made these spacers because uh, I was actually going to have a little bit too much in my eyes, a little too close to the frame. Um, came with spacers, but they weren't, they were straight, so made these a little bit of an angle to put that shock right in the center. Um, they do ride pretty close to the chassis here, so. I'm going to cut just a little bit of that out just to make sure I have plenty of clearance. Um, notice the frame looks a little crappy, this black haze that's on in spots. But the reason for that, um, after I re-welded everything, I want it to be able to not have, later on once the car's done, uh, issues with if moisture got in the frame, um, rust coming out. Had the thing sandblasted and all, but so we took, I don't know if you'll be able to see in here, but the inside of the frame, or a bit of it, is painted black. And uh, what I did, got some chassis saver, um, and we took and uh, I sealed off all the holes with tape, put about, I don't know, uh, half a gallon in it and rolled and rolled and rolled the rotisserie so it ended up coating every bit of the inside of the frame you can look into it with a bore scope and it's coated everywhere it looks like you've been inside painting it um, but that way I didn't have any rust coming out later had to replace uh, this section here you notice it looks a little bit smoother I cut all that out and replaced that because it was rusty um, not two holes, but had some pretty deep pitting in it. It was pretty thinned out. Here again, it looks kind of nasty on the outside, but that's all going to get painted over. That's where it was uh, 
when we were rolling it, it was running out. So it worked really good. If you have access to rotisserie and you're going to do your frame, probably a good idea to be able to coat it inside. Um, saw the rear suspension. Um, for the sway bar, you do have to mount a bracket. And I did back here because um, it really won't be seen. I did go for their, uh, their bolting mechanism here in the back. Uh, works really good. Uh, rev nuts, rev nuts. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, you drill it, put them in. They almost are like a pop rivet. Tighten it down, and it uh, clamps or swedges the nut inside there, and uh, works really, really good. So anyway, this is all together. I'll go through how I uh, mounted it, uh, what I did. Um, I'm getting ready to bust this down so I can take the frame and paint the outside. Uh, one thing, the welds, make sure you guys are doing something like this. Um, the welds on this thing was terrible. Very few of them um, are factory anymore. Uh, this was, of course, before I coated the inside, but uh, they were just terrible. Um, I don't know how this stayed together, some of it. Uh, the Boys 66 frame, which happens to be here on the floor, uh, was even worse. There was welds that were not even touching the base, the, the two different pieces, the parent metal or the, the uh, part, the bracket that was getting welded on. They were beside it, not even in the scene. Um, so I would definitely check your welds, especially if you're building anything with any kind of horsepower. I said a few of these I left, but most of them I tried to grind out and re-weld. Um, had to make because this is going to be a, a uh, dual exhaust car. So um, I just copied the and swapped it sideways. That bracket there, factory bracket. Took and uh, tried to make a copy of it, but the opposite side. So this is a new bracket. It's made out of some 16, uh, 16th of an inch metal, and then weld it back on. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna tear this all apart, and I'll show you how I put this together. All right, this is the Ride Tech air suspension system on the 59 passenger side with tubular control arms got everything mocked up um, I've set the ride height to what should have been factory uh, according to all the assembly manuals uh, adjusted the pan hard bar to get the rear end centered in the chassis itself and then uh, I'll show you how I did all this but of course, the control arm runs lower to the rear end, um, so you see the angle to the bottom of the bag mount there, but you notice the bag's sitting pretty daggone straight. It's not like offset or anything. Same with the other direction. I'll show you how I got to that. Not that it was off very far. I'm a little picky, so I did uh, some fine tuning. Um, Part of that has to deal with that right there. Um, this car did not have a hole there. It said in the instructions that uh, some cars have a hole in the middle. Uh, if not, you'd have to drill it. And that sets it a four degree angle, that part of the frame, to what the bag would set. So uh, I turned out a spacer and milled it four degrees and weld it in there to so it wasn't pulling on the I guess you would call this a perch for the bag underneath um, also put some locator dowel pins in here I did a little tough to see there's one there and the other one's kind of hidden but one right there um, because I did a little work to the top of these bag perches um, to in my eyes, make them nest in the frame a little bit better. But I'll show you how I did all that. All right, here we are without the bag in place, but still the perches in place. Um, I'll show you how I 
check to see my location was right or not. This perch area here, um, this plate across here, center of the bag is two and three quarter. Um, and that should line up in my eyes with the center of this mount down here for the bag. At least when it's at right height, that would be the easiest on the bag, I would think. So uh, pretty simple. I just took a piece of sheet metal, made sure three sides were square, that one, that one, and the bottom. Um, made me a mark at the bottom, two and three quarter over, because that's how far over the center is of the bag on the top. And since it's square, I can hold it right on that edge. You can see my arrow down there, two and three quarters, pointing. If I can get this turned right so you can see it good. It's pointing right at the center of that lower mount. Now, before I did what I'm going to show you, I did at the top of the perch. It was over here. Not that this wouldn't work. Um, I was, guys are putting these on all the time, and they seem to work totally fine. Um, like I said, I'm a little picky and want to make everything as close to perfect as possible. Um, it's also the same the other direction, 90 degrees this way. Um, it lines right up with the hole also. But I'll show you now how I was able to do that. Okay, here's the Rad Tech, what I was calling a perch, but it's actually called, they call it a cup bracket. So this is what your uh, bag mounts to on the top of the bag, and then the top of this, this area here, mounts to the frame. Now let's cut it a taper. Try to get this about shaking too bad. Cut it a taper to match your chassis. Um, and I would say that is really the best that you can get. It appears that all the brands I've seen are all done like this. And uh, like I said, it's probably the very best they can do because everybody's frame is not going to be exactly alike. They should be from the factory. Um, but after measuring mine, most of the brackets are not welded on where they're supposed to be. Some of them by a pretty good distance. Um, and I'm surprised some of them actually have stayed. The welds were terrible. I had to re-weld every frame, every weld on the frame. Um, we've had to do that on the boys 66. And I've had a, a Pontiac that I worked on years back in the same way. Um, <laughs> quality was not the same, at least from the frame manufacturers, which GM didn't make their own frames. They were made by Bud or A.O. Smith um, at one point in time, among others. Um, so anyway, that's where it that came with. Um, of course, your, where this mounts is where your spring was. And the spring profile is actually like this. This piece of tubing I bought. Um, and to get the profile, because this other, like this, works fine um, but here again because everybody's car is going to be a little bit different on mine the bag didn't quite line up top to bottom center lines of them and it still would have worked perfectly fine it's an airbag but I'm a little bit picky so uh, I went for getting it lined up as best I could plus this only touches because of the way the frames made in a couple spots around here it doesn't touch all the way around um, I don't know what percentage, maybe 70% of it, 60% of it touches, which there again is probably the best I could do. I, um, these ride tech stuff, I would highly recommend getting their stuff. Um, great guys to deal with. Like I said, I, I don't think you get any better with the top of this to match everybody's car. I'm just profiling it to mine. But uh, super good instructions. There's one of the instruction manuals there. That's for the uh, rear sway bar on this car. Um, real high quality stuff. Like I said, super guys, good guys to deal with. Anyway, there's the uh, profile that I came up with. And I got that by holding this up underneath the car. 
uh, square to where the bag should ride. And then just made this cheap little piece of metal, bent piece of metal, doesn't matter what the distance is, with a marker taped to it. Poke it up there against the frame, go around, draw your profile, and then you take that profile and transfer it to the top and cut it. And then you take a piece of, uh, of uh, poster board, which is what I got here, and you match that profile on there. Uh, any of you guys did any kind of pipe fitting or anything? Um, they make things called a pipe wrap, but you could do make a pipe wrap out of just a long piece of paper or Like I said poster board works good but If you got some piece of paper poster board and one side of it straight like this You wrap that around a pipe. I wish I could do it here Without holding on to the camera, but I'm having to you wrap that around the pipe As long as you keep this edge You can do it out here in the middle as long as you keep that edge lined up with the other edge and pull it tight um, you can transfer a line around there or just make your straight line you want to cut a piece of pipe just as long as you wrap that around and keep that straight around the bottom that'll make a perfectly square line all the way around that pipe for you to cut so anyway I made this profile around here I marked it on the paper um, used the paper and transferred that to this one so then that gave me this profile because of the bracket I had to put it on the inside um, but I transferred that profile over and that gave me this which matches the inside of my frame all that angle and everything on there now you notice these two pins. Of course, to make that profile, um, I need this to stay in the same spot when I'm doing the gauge and everything else. Otherwise, I'll make a profile, and because of this right here, which is what lines up to your bump stop for the rear end, um, that would not have this in the right spot. <clears throat> so, I drilled two 3 16 holes where I knew the diameter of this would fall out on top. And those became my lineup holes. So whenever I put this one in before I cut the profile, um, and then also when I put this one in, you notice that little mark right there, I lined that up with the holes I had drilled in the frame. Then once I transferred this profile, I put it up, bolted the whole thing in place, drilled down through my holes so I could put these 3 16 dowels in, tig them on, cut them off. So now when I put this back on the frame, it goes back in the exact same spot every time and it makes this totally zero degrees square with the bag um, and the the center line of this ends up with the center line of my lower control arm at ride height. So anyway, like I said, overkill. But I uh, told you guys I'd let you know how I did everything. So on to the next thing.